Hello, welcome. This is Matt. Today's video, I want to show you something really important if you intend on doing any kind of advanced material setup, any kind of layered material setup or landscape blends um, with materials in Unreal Engine, and that is the idea of taking a bunch of masks and packing them into one texture called mask packing. I've got an example of one here, and this texture looks very funny. Um, but what it actually is, is three different black and white textures, each of one on a different channel. So the red channel, in this case, has an ambient occlusion map, the green channel has a roughness map, and the blue channel has a depth map. And so when I build a material, like this mud material, instead of having to have three different texture samples for each of those masks, they can all exist in the same one. And indeed, you can hide one in the alpha channel as well. Now, why, why would you want to do this? Well, textures and loading and unloading textures from memory is one of the most RAM intensive parts um, of, a, of a, a game or any computer graphics related thing. Um, so the fewer textures that have to be loaded and unloaded, the better. And for this, for this reason, the materials editor in Unreal, if you, if you turn on stats up here, it literally shows you the number of texture samples that you have. It's like a couple just for overhead, but you literally cannot have more than 16 in any material. Um, and if you built a very complex landscape material with say four layers, and each of those has a, a regular texture plus a normal plus you know, two different maps, then you've already exceeded that. And, and you just won't be able to have that advanced material. So you have no other option but to to pack some of those grayscale maps into one of these um, three or four channel textures. Um, I've been searching a long time for ways to do this in Photoshop, Photoshop Creative Cloud anyway, and, it, and as always, sorry about that, turned out to be much harder than you'd think. Um, you can't really just like copy paste data into whatever channel you want. So I've, I finally found a method and I, I've been searching the internet forever to try to find a clear one. Maybe I'm just bad at Googling, but, um, so I'll, I'll show you how to do it. Um, First of all, where I'm getting textures from, um, generally like these are really good for things like photorealism because having things like an ambient occlusion and a depth map can add a lot of detail. Um, you, it's hard to generate those if you're doing hand painted stuff. Um, so where I'm getting these, especially for things like rocks and bricks and stuff is from this site. It used to be CG textures, but now it's just textures.com. Um, I'm not, you know, working for them or anything, but um, it's free, you can get like 15 images a day or something, and licensing terms are pretty generous. What we're looking for is either in substance materials or 3D scan surfaces, because those categories are going to have those black and white maps that we're going to make use of. So in scan surfaces, whoa there, there's a ton of good stuff in here. River stones and soil and stuff, especially for landscape materials and bricks and things, but I'm going to do, I was feeling like doing some rocks today, so I'm going to do this cliff rock. And that looks like this. And you can see it comes with a normal and a diffuse texture. And then it comes with a height map, a roughness map, and an ambient occlusion map. Um, so I've just downloaded all five of these, and I put them in a nice little folder. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to delete this one. This is from me proving I could do this. Um, so let's just go ahead and pull those into Photoshop. And what we're going to do is create a new file. Um, you can create a custom, I've kind of got a preset here, but in this case, these are 1K, 1024 by 1024 textures in RGB color mode. Um, and then we're gonna start them at 16-bit. Now, now, here's some complexity involving color depth. Um, there are two times of file format you can use or that you probably should use in Unreal Engine, and those are PNG and Targa, or TGA. Um, Mostly you're probably experienced with working in PNGs. I've, I've been looking on the forums to see what people use and the word on the street is that sometimes PNGs can do things like clip alpha channels and be a little finicky when dealing with masks. So uh, the, the workflow I've seen experienced people use is to, is to use PNGs for um, any you know regular old texture like a, a diffuse or albedo or a normal map and then to use Targa or TGA for masks or anything with an alpha channel that's important. Um, I tell you this because Photoshop will not allow you to export as a TGA, a Targa, if you are in 16-bit color. It has to be 8-bit. It doesn't really matter. You generally will probably want to work in 8-bit anyway because it'll have your file sizes. 
um, and that's just all the better for performance. Um, there are rare cases where you do want 16-bit depth, and that's when you're actually deforming vertices by a height map like this. Um, you, you may find, well, let me explain what this color depth is, like 8-bit means that um, from black to white it's a value from 0 to 255. So there are 255 steps I can take. 16-bit is another power of 2 up. And so you can notice sometimes if you use a height map for a landscape where you really need a detailed height map for something like a rock or a cliff face that 8-bit will cause some kind of stair-stepping in the depth. Um, and in that case, you would want that 16-bit, and that's going to require you to use a PNG rather than a TGA. Normally, I'm going to use 8-bit PNG or 8-bit TGA. I'm going to leave this at 16-bit, though, because if you start at 16-bit, you can always change a setting. It's like one checkbox that changes it to 8-bit. If you, if you start an 8-bit, then you've lost that data forever. You can never go back. So it's much easier to export it down. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Background contents, why advanced options don't really matter. We'll create one. And then what I'm going to do is load each of those images in as a separate layer here. So one, two, three, oops, I just duplicated a bunch. Oh no. One, two, three, four, five. And you notice that I already have a duplicate of the diffuse and the normal. That's because these by default imports or they download as a, as a TIFF file and Unreal Engine is not very happy with those. It won't let you import those. So you can do this any number of ways, but I just went ahead and imported them, opened them up in Photoshop, and then I just file, export that, export as PNG. And I'll show you these settings when we get to it. But I've already done that. You're going to do that with diffuse and with normal. The rest of these, ambient occlusion, height, and roughness, we're going to pack into one texture. So you'd think, um, let me just like take ambient occlusion and I'll just drag and drop it in here. Um, in this case, it's going to tell me that it's a different color depth than the source. And the reason for that is that the ambient occlusion and the roughness are 8-bit. You notice, you remember that I, they, I created this image in 16-bit. So in this case, it's not, we're not lowering color depth, we're increasing it. So that's fine. That's not going to reduce any detail. I'm going to redock that um, and then just like center this. And I'll do roughness next because I kind of want that on my green channel. Same thing. Center that, and then height map is the same way. And this one won't give me that warning because it's already 16-bit. Okay, and I'm actually going to invert those layers. And the reason I'm doing that, if you notice, I'll pull up my other material, and it's hard to tell. You don't when you look at these masks, like which one of these channels is depth and which one is ambient occlusion. It can be hard to tell sometimes. So it's best if you find a find a, a layering that's consistent at least. So in my case, I'm going to put ambient occlusion always on the red channel, and then roughness or specular or metallic data on the green channel, depth on the blue channel if I have it, and then alpha is kind of optional. So I've got these ordered the way I want them. You'd think that you could just like take one of these layers and copy it and then go over to channels and just like paste it wherever you want, but you just, you just can't do that. You just can't really get information between layers and channels that I know of. If you, if you know an easier way than this, please tell me. I've seen a couple of ways that end up kind of compressing and losing data, but here's how I'm doing it. I'm taking the layer I want, and then I'm taking a curves adjustment. You could use channel mixer or whatever. But all we're going to do is, I want this on the, that's interesting, I must have dragged that down. Um, I want this one to be the red channel. And excuse me, I'm actually going to delete that. It's important that you only have visible the layer you're working in. And I can also go ahead and delete the background layer, I don't really need that. So visible and selected is the layer I want to go into the red channel. I'm going to add a curves adjustment, and because it's the red channel, I don't need the green or the blue channel's information. So I'm going to take green, and I'm just going to take this. This represents the full value, and I'm just going to like crush that all the way down. And then I'm going to take blue, and I'm going to crush that all the way down. And that leaves it red like this. If I go into channels, you notice that if I solo the red channel, you see my mask. And it's in the red channel, just the way I want it. And then green and blue are both black, which is ideal. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and right click and merge down. I'll just kind of finalize that onto that layer. Let me get a drink of water really quick. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to duplicate this process with the other two. So I make this one the only one visible. I select it and I go and I do adjustments, curves. This one goes on the green channel. So I'm going to crush red 
and I'm going to crush blue. I'm going to merge that down. I'm going to make the third layer visible, select it, curves adjustment, and this one needs to be blue, so I crush red and I crush green. Boom. Merge down. So now I have my red, my green, and my blue. And you'd think, wow, that was pretty easy. Now what do we do? We just like merge visible? Uh, no, because now we only have the red channel. It doesn't, it doesn't play nicely when some of these channels are full black. So if you consider grayscale as black being zero and white being a full value, then what we really need to do is take all of these like three channel sets and add them together because the zeros aren't going to influence anything. So the way we do this is we leave our bottom layer or any layer just the way it is. And then the other two layers, we need to set their blend mode up here to be, it's called linear dodge in Photoshop, but it's additive. And the same with layer two, we will set that to be additive. And now if I show all of them, you see this weird looking thing, but that's good because that means that we've got just what we want in red, just what we want in green, and just what we want in blue. Fantastic. Um, you probably should leave these like this so that you can tweak them layer later. I'm just gonna like, I don't know, flatten it just, just for fun. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and export. Now, first I'll show you export as PNG. Export, it'll tell you the file size. And you notice that I'm in 16-bit color and this is 1.6 megabytes. In this mask pack, I'm not actually using transparency. So if I needed that 16-bit depth, I'd probably want to lose transparency. And that's gonna drop me 200 megs, or sorry, uh, 0.2 megs phew, off by a couple orders of magnitude. In my case, this height map doesn't have to be this high resolution. Like I'm only going to use it for, for vertex painting stuff. So um, I'm going to go ahead and tell this to do 8-bit. It's going to force transparency, but it's going to reduce my file size once this finish ca finishes calculating. It's just going to cut it in half, more than half, in fact. I'm going to uncheck convert to sRGB. I don't, I don't think this is necessary, but um, for a regular image. Unreal is going to use sRGB. This mask pack, we're going to set the engine to use it a little bit differently, but this should be good. Um, you can leave it just the way it is. Export that. You don't have to follow my naming conventions, but I like to do T underscore for texture, and then in this case, this is T underscore cliff rock M for mask. And I'll save that out. And now we have our mask pack just the way we want it. Uh, let me show you a couple things about that file size. First of all, I'm also going to go ahead and show you how to export this as Targa if you wanted. Um, you would go to Image, Mode, and you would change this to 8 bits per channel. Simple enough. And then it's not an export, you have to go to Save As. And Targa should be in this list. If I was in 16 bit, then Targa just wouldn't show up. And then you can save that same place. Um, Targa will then let you change resolution, which is interesting. Um, we'll say 16 for now. And there we go. I don't actually know where I saved that to, but it's okay. So the difference between PNG and Targa is that they're both lossless compression. Um, the reason you don't use JPEG is that each time you load and save, it's going to compress it. Um, and so you'll just get weird artifacting and, and whatnot. Um, as far as the engine is concerned, they're the same. I've got this depth map for my MUD. Um, one of these, this is a Targa and this is a, a PNG. And I'll open them both here. Um, so you can see there's a lot of information here. It's a 1K texture and it is 683 kilobytes in engine. And then my PNG is 683 kilobytes in engine. So as far as the engine is concerned, they're going to be pretty identical. Um, this one is higher color depth and you can actually see it if you swap between these two. So The, the engine is not, it's not going to affect actual performance using one over the other. What it will affect is your file system. And, you know, textures are kind of a, a big resource a lot of times. Um, if I go and I check my landscape folder here, I've got, I've got three of these. Um, one of them is Targa, one of them is the TIFF that I downloaded, and then one of them is my PNG. So my PNG is 560 kilobytes, and then my Targa is like a megabyte. So about, about twice the size, just for my file system, not for Unreal. And then the Targa is also, um, excuse me, I had it the other way around. The Targa is higher, higher color depth than the, than the PNG. Anywho, 
let's pull up this engine here and there's a tweak we need to make here um, let's go ahead and import our new textures I'm gonna go ahead and go to cliff rock I'm gonna take my PNG my mask and my, my PNG version of my normal and we're going to import all of those and it should tell me that cliff rock in because it's underscore in it was imported as a normal map if it didn't do that you can change this texture group to normal map okay a couple things we need to do this texture is fine it's a regular old texture and then this texture it changed it to be a normal map which is okay um, this is special it's a mask and because it's a mask pack you want to go over here and and uncheck srgb the tooltip says uncheck it if you're using alpha channels individually as masks uncheck that that's it uh, just a quick tip there's a lot of settings over here that are really good um, one is that you you want to make sure that your textures are always a square power of two not just because they're a little easier for the gpu to handle but because unreal engine actually by default when you move forward and away and when levels of details change it actually will use lower versions of those textures um, for rendering to save on memory and it will not do that if they're not a square power of two these stylized trees over here use a texture that is 1035 by 972 and their texture resolution is is responsible for about half the texture re resolution in this scene because they're using the highest resolution all the time um, the, the texture memory that is so one thing you can do is you can go here and you can set power of two mode to like power of two square the problem is this is like just a little bit bigger than 1024 and so it'll make it gigantic <laughs> and I don't want that um, so and this is just a prototype anyway so but there's a lot of good settings here you can you can create alphas by doing a chroma key you can in normal normal maps sometimes you know they're inverted when you bring them in you can invert that here um, a lot of good stuff so play around with those settings let's go ahead and build the material for this for this rock just really simply oh wow I actually need to change that back or we're gonna have some problems here there we go um, over in rock I will make a material called M underscore cliff rock open it up take my textures and throw them in there and then it is a simple matter of plucking base color into base color, normal into normal. And then remember that I have red as ambient occlusion, green is roughness, and blue is depth, which I'm not actually gonna use here right now. Note also that because I had changed that little setting, that little setting that said this is non-sRGB, when I imported it into the material, it automatically changed the color mode to linear color, as opposed to, and this one's normal because it imported and automatically detected that it was a normal map a regular texture will be color normal map is normal and these masks will be linear color so if 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 you hadn't changed that setting it would throw you an error and you would have to go change this that's the only thing and now if i you know preview my material wow look we've got rocks with like depth and stuff um if i had more vertices in fact if i like I can do an experiment here this might not work but I can throw on like P and triangles tessellation and then throw this into world displacement and we'll see what happens and eh, maybe not maybe it'll work on a circle sphere that is well whatever um, point being that you know it's common that you want to run you want a material and you want it to have a mask for like little scratches and a, and a mask for uh, little dents and stuff and those will be separate little black and white textures and instead of doing that or you want a little cloudy noise texture you can pack those into the same texture and you can reduce your your texture memory overhead by like a third or two thirds even so it's very important and i just hadn't seen any good like tutorials or information out there about how to do this so that is it i'll throw my material on there you know it's not wonderful or anything it has seams and stuff but pretty rad nonetheless okay um you notice that i've been doing stuff with like scene depth even though i'm not really using it uh, next video is going to be showing you a lot about how to do landscape layer blends with height maps and vertex painting with height maps so tune back in like comment subscribe whatever the kids are doing these days so uh, thank you for watching i'll see you next time